Hi there, I'm Tom and this is video two in our series of how to make a remote robot with the Hummingbird kit and NetsBlocks. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to log into NetsBlocks and then how to use it to configure the file that runs the robot on your device locally. That's the, called the server file. So if you haven't yet, go to this site, birdbraintechnologies.com slash remote dash robots slash make your own remote robot. And then from here, you can click on editor.netsblocks.org. And that will bring up this interface and then you'll want to log in. So if you haven't got a username yet, sign up first and then log in. Okay, so now it's connected. So the file we're going to make in this video is called the server file, which is what runs on your local laptop uh, and it's connected to your Hummingbird robot. Um, so this tutorial already assumes that you're familiar with programming the Hummingbird bit in the Snap programming environment. If you're not, there's um, a programming tutorial and a pre-recorded course linked from this tutorial here. Okay, so the we have created some uh, starter projects for you to use. So you'll want to use the server project and open that up. And then you'll want to turn on your Hummingbird kit. So here's my Hummingbird. I'm going to plug it in. all lit up, it's flashing uh, its initials, and now I'm going to launch the Bluebird connector. So that's coming up, it's looking for my robot, and it has found it. And now I'm not going to click on Snap. I'm just going to put this on another screen because now uh, this NetsBlocks project actually has access to this robot. So if I go to Hummingbird Position Servo here, pull that out, I can actually program the robot by clicking on that. All right. So in this project, you'll see there's um, a sprite and a stage, and most of what's happening is actually in the stage. So if I click in the stage, you can see there's quite a bit of code in there. I'm actually going to minimize this, and if you're using a smaller screen, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I've just made the blocks a little bit bigger. All right, so if I'm in the stage, you can see that essentially what's going on here is there's a program that runs all the time. And then there are messages um, that get activated when a message comes from the client program, such as a connect message, a disconnect message, a motor, a servo, an LED and a tri LED. Now what you want to do is edit this code to make it reflect the reality of your robot. So for example, the robot that we have, um, this little guy, only actually has two position servos. It doesn't have any other outputs. So for all other outputs, I could, instead of checking if there's a port and trying to set a tricolor LED that isn't there, I can change this code to remove this entirely and basically say that if you sent a try LED message um, that this robot has no try LEDs, no LEDs, or something like that. 
I can do the same thing with the LED message and with the motor message, which is about rotation servos. Now the other thing I can do is with the servos themselves, um, in this case, we have two servos on ports one and two. And servo two has its full range of motion. So it can definitely move through the whole range. Servo one, on the other hand, uh, can only move a little bit. And so you don't want somebody who's not in the room with you sending a servo command that could break your robot. And so what you can do is set the bounds of each servo individually. So the way you would do that is you would change this code slightly. So first check if the port is in bounds. So I only have two servos, so I'm going to say port in bounds one and two, which means only allow settings for servos connected to port one or port two. And then I'm going to use the control logic to say, if we're talking about port one, so if the port variable equals one, then I'm going to use this set angle function and bound it to value from 90 to 130. That's what I've determined is okay for the, for, you know, this movement to make it still work. Now I can duplicate this and say if port equals 2, well then I'm okay with setting it to the full range from 0 to 170. And now I need to move this code that I had taken out back so that we actually set the hummingbird to that angle. And let me just clean this up a little bit. And so that's the kind of thing that you want to go into the stage and edit. You'll definitely want to make sure that, um, that you're providing your user on the other end with correct feedback if they're setting uh, ports that don't exist or components that aren't connected to the robot and also to prevent them from damaging the robot. Now the last thing you'll want to do with the server file is you'll want to make, well first you'll want to save it. So save it as whatever project you want to call this. So let's call it um, little bot example in my case, but you should save it as whatever name you've decided to give your robot. And then once you have saved it, you want to call this um, block, just click on it, and you'll see a, um, oops, I don't think it's saved properly. So save as little bot example. Actually, um, I want to save it to the cloud. I'm sorry about that. So save as little bot example to the cloud. And then call this and you'll see it gives you a code. In my case, it says robot at sign little bot example at sign humming Tom, which is my user ID. So that's the unique identifier that the client file is going to have to know in order to send messages to this server file. Um, so you want to write that down because you'll need it when configuring your client file, which is what we'll do in the next video.